earlier in the year. A quick update for you. A boat carried election personnel to registration area 17 in Kuluama, that's in southern Ijo local government area. We understand capsized yesterday. Fortunately, no life was lost as all the election personnel numbering 12 as well as the boat operator were rescued. INEC officials reviewed in a statement that election result sheets, power banks and luggage containing personal effects of staff have been lost to the sea. So the total number of registered voters in that affected area is 5,368 and the number of PVCs collected we understand is 5,311. INEC is also saying that it's making efforts to ensure that the election hold in the affected area. Another development from that part of the country is that um, INEC supervising presiding officer assigned to registration area 06, that's Osioma in Sagbama local government area, was abducted while waiting to board a boat at Amasoma Jetty. Uh, security agencies, we understand, have been notified and there is no update yet on rescue operations. Let's turn to Bayelsa State where correspondent uh, Sarah Yeku is standing by. Sarah, it's eight minutes past seven. Uh, walk us through what the situation report is where you are. start to this morning uh, election day here in Bielsa State and it's a bit foggy, hazy uh, here in you know, Goa. I'm in the state capital, you know, where we're going to have majority of the votes come out uh, when you take a look at the eight local governments in Bielsa State. And so a development story from last night is that a boat conveying election duty personnel um, capsized in, uh, in um, Southern Ijo local government, which is a local government that is not accessible to uh, by road to a lot of people. Uh, you can't access Southern Ijo local government. You can only do that by sea. And so uh, this is not the first time we've seen uh, a boat capsizing, a boat conveying uh, election uh, officials, you know, uh, capsizing uh, um, at that uh, area. But what we see right now is that um, uh, INEC has said that uh, they will try as much as possible to ensure that the election materials that were lost to sea are, are, are replaced uh, from the headquarters here in, um, in Yanogua and taken down to uh, Southern Ijo local government. We're also expecting to see the police give us an update on the supervising presiding officer who was abducted yesterday while at the Amasuma, while he was at the Amasuma jetty. Uh, earlier this morning, I had called uh, the commissioner of police. Uh, where he said that uh, we'll get an update pretty soon as to what rescue operation has been put in place to ensure that this person is rescued from his so-called abductors. Uh, another update is that uh, we're hoping to also see uh, one million, uh, one mi over a little over a million voters come out uh, to the 2,242 polling units here in Bayelsa State to elect the next governor of the state. Uh, it's a pretty tight race, especially for the uh, contenders. I'm talking about the two uh, major political parties here in Bayelsa State. It's a tight race, and fingers are crossed as to how INEC would fare in this election. Of course, they have something to prove uh, going uh, after the um, February election, after the presidential election, and uh, the senatorial elections that we had across the country. Uh, they also have something to prove, which is to gain the trust you know, from the, the Nigerian public as to how they would conduct this particular election. Also, the police, you know, have something to prove. Uh, just yesterday and a couple of days before today, we saw groups protesting uh, and also asking for the removal of the Commissioner of Police, that's Tolani Alausa, here in Bayelsa State. And uh, so we're hoping to see, and the police has said that this pre-election pre issue should not be a determinant or should not be a, a, a way to judge the police preparedness for this election. As you know, that 27,000 uh, police officers have been deployed for this election, and that's aside the other paramilitary agencies that we're going to see uh, at this election. So right now, we're not, just, we're not too far from the police command headquarters. If you see uh, the road leading to the police command headquarters, you see the barricade and um, a slight activity happening there. We've seen um, a barrage of uh, police officers, you know, go around the city, are coming from this area uh, to the other parts of the state capital just to ensure that they 
kickstart the patrol on time before election starts at 8.30 a.m. And so we see people moving around, some trying to make the last trip to their polling units and ensure that they are settled for election and wait for INEC officials to resume at 8.30 a.m. So from what we've gathered from INEC, they've also told us that all of the materials are at the various rack centers. So we expect that by now at the rack centers, most of the materials will be out to the various polling units and INEC officials will already be setting up there. If I it looks good from where you are, Sarah. It also feels like it might be cold, uh, but with what the, le what the weather looks like this morning, uh, we can see uh, some police personnel driving uh, just behind you. The curfew began at midnight, and um, according to the police, uh, there will be restriction of movement uh, till 6 p.m. Uh, traveling to where you are this morning, walk us through what you were able to observe as regards these restrictions. I think for a lot of people, you know, a day like this is just a day of rest. And we're hoping that we would not get the voter apathy that we saw in February presidential election today. Because uh, we're expecting to see that since it's the governorship election, people are enthusiastic. At, at, for now, if I may, people are decided. It's just a very uh, slight percentage of people remain undecided as to who they will vote for uh, this morning. And so a lot of persons I've spoken with a couple of days back, even before today, say they are decided. They made up their mind like before now to elect who they feel is the right person for them. Uh, that's the person that will stay at the affairs of the uh, state in the next four years. So they are decided voters. A lot of people here are decided. They know who they want to vote for out of the 16 candidates. And you know the 16 candidates more are like brothers and sisters uh, in the state because you know that this is the Ujjah nation. The more all of them are from the same extraction. So uh, the, one of the messages you know, from INEC is that these contenders should know and particularly the youths who are the DIG uh, in charge of this election had said that they are the vanguards of political violence should know that apart from today these contenders are brothers and sisters, and so there should not be a reason for violence. The fact that we have this huge number of persons vying for the governorship position uh, shows that only one person can win, and so we're going to have 15 losers, sadly, for this election. So anybody that does not want to lose the election should not have been in the election in the first place. And so we're expecting to see that a lot of voters should, will come out since this is their own governorship election who they want to vote for, particularly show their support for their candidates. I agree with you. Bayosa can only have one governor at a time. I've spoken myself with some of the candidates who mentioned that they are ready to, you know, acknowledge or accept defeat as long as they have the persuasion that the process itself is credible. What is the timeline for the voting uh, based on INEC, uh, INEC's guideline? Um, um, accreditation is expected to start by 8 a.m., right? So for here, accreditation will start by 8.30 a.m. Election starts 8.30 a.m. So you know that immediately you are accredited, you, are, you go vote uh, almost simultaneously. And so what we're expected to see is that um, elections probably by end uh, pretty soon, particularly for uh, the local governments on land. But where the problem is, is at the local governments which are across the water, we're talking Southern Ijo, Brass, um, Nambi, and all the, uh, particularly the flashpoints that the police had highlighted. Five out of eight local governments, Nifemi, the police said that these are flashpoints, although they're also focusing their uh, security watch on the other three local governments. I'm talking this flashpoints, I'm talking Sagbama, Nimbe, Southern Ijo, Brass, Kolokuma, Okokuma, and these are the local governments that they are actually watching closely. Uh, but a lot of persons have even said, from, from what I've gathered you know, from the indigents here, they say that they are even scared to go to a place like Southern Ijo, for instance, because of the violence they've heard in those places. Even some persons are being skeptical about going to a place like um, Brass, for instance, where one of the major contenders is from. So we're expecting to see that the police will, of course, up their game, given the number of personnel that they've got for this election. Uh, security concerns, of course, election observers have raised security concerns as to uh, 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 these local governments 
we, which are the local governments that usually delay a collation? Uh, like in 2019, if you remember, in Southern Niger, for instance, there was a delay, you know, as to the collation of uh, results. They had to bring it down here to, you know, go out to complete the collation of results. So we're expecting that when election starts at 30 a.m., I know they of course, to have their national commissioners that will be going on patrol to ensure that the Beavers machine, which is a major issue, a major decider here in the election, will be working effectively with function. They're also assuring residents in Biosa State that 8.30 elections will start, 2.30 elections will end, particularly uh, but, you know, for those who are on the queue, uh, if you're on the queue before 2.30, you'll be allowed to vote, vote, but if you're not on the queue before 2.30, you wouldn't be allowed to vote. So we're expecting that this process would last from 8.30 to 2.30 uh, p.m. And um, we're also expecting you know, to see uh, INEC officials make that statement as to how the collation would commence, because that's one major issue here in Bielsa State. Collation of result is the biggest issue. What, what are you hearing from um, INEC as regards um, uh, its um, operation in that regard? Some resident electoral commissioners have talked about electronic collation, which sounds a little bit alien to what we're used to in the past. Are there any modification that you're hearing about, Sarah? Seen, what we're going to see today is nothing, it's not really different from what we saw in the presidential election. So we're expecting to see that when you use the Beavers machine to confirm if you're a voter in a particular um, polling unit and to also ascertain the number of uh, voters in that polling unit, you go ahead, you cast your vote and then wait for the votes to be counted by 2.30 p.m. So we're expecting that even while the party agents would wait for the collection of results at the polling unit uh, um, level, we're also expecting to see that this results now from the polling unit would be taken as a picture would be taken and uploaded to IREF. Now from what I gathered from the INEC resident electoral commissioner, he had said that um, the IREF is not necessarily a collation tool. It's just to show that this was the result at this polling unit. And so the collation continues at the registration area, that's the RAP, and then the uh, ward level, and then they bring it down to the state capital. So collation necessarily, we're hoping that would be faster this time around because of the innovation uh, that um, the INEC had employed for the, um, the February elections. We're also expecting that um, while we await the results from these local governments, particularly those across uh, the waters, we're expecting that the security situation there would also be um, monitored and it would not deter the outcome of this election. But another thing that election observers had raised is that um, they are hoping that persons with disability would be catered for in this election. But we got an assurance from the resident electoral commissioner saying that that aspect of this election has been catered for, knowing that these voters are initially registered as persons with disability. That's at the point of registering, as a, at the point of voter registration, they are already registered as uh, persons with disability. And so we're not expecting to see uh, aid equipment at um, all of the 2,000 and 2,242 polling units. We're expecting to see aid equipment for persons with disability only at a, a polling units where you have persons with disabilities. So they have been able to identify these polling units and that's where they will be able to cater to persons with disabilities. So for now, INEC, we're waiting to, for them to give us an update, of course, as to the issue that happened yesterday, which was uh, how they would sort out the, um, polling, the, the registration area in um, Southern Asia local government. We're also hoping to hear from them what would be different this time, how they would undo the peculiarities here in Bayer system. Uh, you have spoken with the people, a cross-section of the people since you uh, got to Yenagua. Just how excited are they? about this election and what's the confidence level like particularly with the you know security challenges you highlighted earlier you know 
it's it's a very interesting state, particularly um, Nifemi. If you take a look at um, the political history of the state and how most of them have been sworn to a certain political party, for, uh, you know, since uh, the democratic rule, and so uh, sometimes it, it's a pretty interesting how some of them seems to be, should I say, diehard fans for some of these political parties. Transcending political parties, some of them are diehard fans of these individuals, that's these contenders in the, in, in the race, they're diehard fans. And so when you speak with them, they are decided, they know who they want to vote for. They are, of course, excited that today, come t today they are actually going to be making history again today and deciding who will steer the affairs of the state in the next four years. So the people are excited. Uh, we're hoping that we would not get the voter apathy because we, we, while I was having, uh, I was at, at a dry clean a laundry store yesterday, we saw some young people actually talk about today and how they're excited about voting. But then there were some sections of, you know, saying that they are not bothered about who eventually emerges governor of the state. But for the older generation now, you see that they know who they want to elect who they want to vote for in this election, but the younger generation now are probably just concerned about some other things as to who will bring food to their table, who would sort out their school fees and other stuff. What they're really concerned about is the economic situation of the country. As you know that Bayasa State has been identified as one of the multidimensionally poor states in Nigeria despite the oil rich um, the oil um, rich you know, status it occupies. And so what we're hoping to see is that um, based on the um, um, canvas uh, nature of uh, the civil society organizations and based on what the education at INEC has given voters over the months in the last months, we're hoping that they will change their mind you know, and then come out and vote for the candidates of their choice. Hold that thought, Sarah. I'll be back with you shortly. Uh, let's also turn now to a